Hello, welcome to the start of another reading vlog. This week is gonna be super nice outside, so hopefully I'll be reading a lot outside. What my plans are is to continue reading this book, God, God in the Evolving Universe. I wanna finish up the last section and get to move on to another one of my mom's books. If you haven't watched my other series, I mentioned that I'm doing a project where I'm reading through the books of my mother's that I kept uh, when we went through her stuff. And I've already read one book that was one of her favorites and it felt really nice to connect to her in that way. I kind of felt her spirit almost, I guess, by reading it, knowing that she read the same things. So I'm gonna finish this. It's basically about human nature, the evolution of like spirituality and civilization and stuff like that. So it's pretty, pretty interesting. I'll get more in depth with it as I read it. And then also I, on audiobook, I have uh, book two of the Book of the New Sun series uh, called The Claw of the Conciliator. I'm currently on chapter eight, so I'm not sure what that means because like it's an audiobook, so and there's two parts, so I can't even tell you how much time is left. At least for the part one in the audiobook, there is about two and a half hours left. So I've definitely started it. Basically, if you read the first book called The Shadow of the Torturer, it is about basically the main character, Severian. He is a part of the Torturer's Guild. So obviously there's torture involved. Um, the beginning of the first book, kind of talks about him growing up as an apprentice and then eventually he you know gets older and takes more control and more responsibilities in the guild and one of them is like obviously taking care of different prisoners and there's this one particular prisoner that he kind of falls in love with and takes pity on and through all that he has a lot of adventures he has to go on because he gets exiled for showing sympathy but they still liked him enough that they, they didn't like kill him so he gets to go on with his life but it's just a little bit harder than it could have been if he you know, didn't do what he had done. And then the second book is just a continuation of his uh, adventures. He, um, at one point in the first book, picks up a relic called the Claw of the Conciliator, and he doesn't really know what it is, but it has basically some magical powers of some sort, and it helps him along his way in the second book, at least so far. So you're kind of following his the drama resulting from having this relic. And then I'm gonna read a romance book of some sort. Either I'm gonna read Beach Read or Neon Gods, one of the two, unless my library hold comes in for book lovers. Uh, if I get that in time for this video, I will read that one instead. So yeah, I'm gonna read a romance. And then the last book, at least I wanna get to, is to continue moving pictures, cause I need to get that done. It's a Discworld book about basically Hollywood, except it's called Hollywood here and it is influencing the alchemists, um, giving them insight on how to make moving pictures. They use like imps in a box that paint what they see and that's like how they get the uh, images. So far there's no sound, but I'm gonna guess their Hollywood is gonna show them how to make sound as well. Um, but it's really funny, like there's like talking animals in here and like they're kind of making fun of like Tom and Jerry and like other movies with like talking dogs in it. So and these poor creatures before all they cared about was like eating and sleeping and now they like have all these dreams and aspirations that they never wanted so, <laughs> so it's, it's it's cute and funny and I, I really like the talking dog he's cool I think I'm about 30% through for that whatever that means I don't even know how many page numbers it is 396 pages so whatever 30% is I'm gonna be working on those and hopefully get to read as much outside as I can because it is beautiful so yeah I will check in when I've made some progress and I'll see you then all right it's a bit windy out here but I'm gonna try to read my hammock. Um, my boyfriend just mowed today, so I'm not in the wilderness anymore. <laughs> so yeah, I will hopefully get through a good bit of my book and I'll let you know how it goes. Hello. I've read about um, 40 more pages, which was the next two chapters. So basically the f first chapter I just read was called Transforming Culture, and it was kind of about uh, talking about how the school system and its focus on just standardized testing is bad for creativity, which I think we all can agree upon, and how we can use some of these you know, spiritual uh, themes to better educate our children and ourselves in general to promote creativity, which I mean, I can't argue with. I definitely agree with that. And I gave some nice examples of people who have created like different education systems that some schools have adopted and are finding success. So that's cool. 
And then also talk about how jobs in general, like businesses and stuff, when they focus on just like compliance all the time, it like doesn't promote healthy employees. So it was emphasizing that getting their input and their creativity working improves uh, businesses and businesses in general, which I definitely could say whenever I was able to do um, projects on my own at work or have a real impact on the business, I definitely felt more valuable. So I agree with that. And then, sorry, a tractor just went by. It's kind of loud. The next chapter I read was about, I was talking about the afterlife and angels basically. I was talking about out of body experiences, near death, and people being visited by, I guess you can call them angels or spirits, either just during meditation or like during some sort of hardship. So like they uh, had an example with like a sailor who, the guy who sailed the, the world by himself when he was sick, he had these visions of, of a tall sailor helping him navigate and thereby saving him where he normally might have perished. So that's cool. I mean, I haven't experienced anything like that, but I also haven't really had that many hardships, I suppose. But I don't disbelieve it. I think, I don't necessarily think people would make that up. At least not everybody. You know, there's a lot of people that have claimed to see things, so. It's definitely interesting. This book is definitely for beginners. I wouldn't expect this to be read in like a college or anything, so. But I do appreciate that they're giving all these names and further readings, so. I'm looking forward to maybe doing some of that later on in my life, so. Yeah, I just got two chapters left, about 50 pages, and then I'm done, so yay. Hello. Yesterday and last night I finished up this book and I don't have a lot to say about the last two chapters. They kind of were whatever to me, but at the very end they did talk about like example meditations and things like that, which are cool. And obviously the very end of the book is the like further reading suggestions or bibliography, which I might reference uh, later on. This book did at least encourage me to like further my studies. Like I'm a little bit inspired. Definitely a beginner book. Um, nothing goes super in depth, which I guess is fine. It's like an entry novel. So this particular book, I probably won't think too deeply into, but some of the further readings I might. Uh, for instance, it even like um, referenced Walden, which is on my uh, spring TBR, so it's good. Glad I read it. Kind of looking forward to like delving more into, into depth with like different religions and customs and stuff like that. So pretty good. Um, I read a little bit of moving pictures as well. Not a lot, but I will keep continuing on to that, hopefully getting it done relatively soon, and then move on to my romance book. Hello. Um, I just got notification that my book is ready at the library, so I'm going to walk there and pick that up. So, yay! Uh, hopefully you can even hear me. It's really windy, so I'll check in once I get the book. Hello, uh, brief check-in on the book lovers. Um, I have read up to like page 60 uh, approximately so far, and still at the very beginning, Nora and her sister just arrived at the little town in North Carolina that they're spending the month at. We have briefly met the potential love interest, uh, Charlie, when they were having like a meet together over a potential book deal, um, but he, he was rude, so she was rude back. You get the idea that maybe they both had a bad day, so maybe they're not actually rude, because you kind of get a little bit of banter through their emails right now, which is kind of cute and funny. But yeah, she's also run into another potential love interest who is just so far described as like a uh, attractive farmer, horse handler. We're not really sure. He, we don't even know his name right now, so that's fun. But yeah, there's going to be some deep moments in here I can tell, like especially about their mom, which they have lost uh, several years ago. I don't even know why yet. But, I mean, it's just going to be something that is a little bit close to home. So, once I get more further into that story, I will let you know how it makes me feel. So, so yeah, I'm going to definitely read some more tonight. 
and hopefully I have more to check in tomorrow. All right, good morning. Uh, last night I did get past the 100 page mark, got to page uh, 130, which is chapter 11. And already there's been some like, I wouldn't necessarily call it a steamy scene, but there's already one like kissy scene that was kind of unexpected, but also not complaining about. <laughs> so far I'm liking it a lot. It's very cute. Both characters are likable, which is good because sometimes you read romance and it's only like the main character that you start with is likable or maybe both of them aren't likable but this one they are both likable they just like to argue but they're like attracted to each other while they're arguing so that's kind of fun but yeah uh, the scenes where she's talking about their mom that they lost is pretty sad there's like a scene where she's talking about how she has dreams about her mom quite frequently but they're always like sad and i mean i definitely have dreams of my mom but I don't necessarily interpret them the way that she seems to. Like, I kind of enjoy them, even though sometimes I cry at the end. I don't know. Hopefully she can get through some of the pain that she's going through. And, like, instead of calling them nightmares when she sees her mom, and then she could maybe enjoy them. Because it's just a different perspective. Basically her dream is, like, she sees her mom. Her and her sister, like, come home and they see her. And then she realizes in her dream that she shouldn't be there. And that's when she, like, is upset. I've had a couple dreams like that, but... Honestly, it was refreshing. It wasn't like how she explained it for her being like devastating. But I don't know. I can definitely relate. I'm hoping she can maybe get through that grief a little bit. Definitely enjoying it. I'm going to read some more outside. I'm already, you know, pretty far and I just got it yesterday. So I'll check in later. Hello. I just wanted to mention that I recently read past the next steamy scene that is cut too short and man, makes me want to go uh, swimming. <laughs> yeah, the, that's a good scene and the drama so far is not too outrageous. I mean, it's a little bit. So if this is what the fake steamy scenes are like, then I am wondering what it's gonna be like later. Yeah, definitely cute, but also mature. <laughs> Good morning again. I read a lot last night. Got to page 325, so there's only about 45 pages left. And I mean, it's very cute. I'm really enjoying it. I do feel like the pining scenes were maybe more fun to read than the actual like love scene that we just read, but that's okay. <laughs> There might be another one in here, but yeah, I like this one. It's, it's more complex than some of the other romance books I've read. Also, Charlie has actual like things going on. And the main reason that he wasn't wanting to actually date her was finally revealed and it, you know, makes some sense. I'm still hoping they can like work out something because obviously I like them together, but at the moment it's still kind of like up in the air, like how they could possibly be together. But yeah, I like that both characters are actually developed, even though it's just in the perspective of Nora, which is sometimes hard to make the other main character seem deep when it's just through her eyes. But it's done a good job of making both of them deep and also even the sister, so I like that. But yeah, I'm gonna go make my coffee and then I'm gonna try to bust out the last 45 pages and I'll let you know how I feel about the end. Well, folks, it is done. Um, definitely enjoyed this. The ending is pretty perfect. I like that no one had to sacrifice their, like, dream career or... Basically everyone gets to live up to what they are most wanting. I don't want to spoil any of the like complications or details, so I'll just say that it's good, has good morals, very cute, and definitely recommend it. It may or may not be my favorite romance so far. It probably ties with Actor Age Eve Brown for me, because they're both pretty cute and the main characters are all lovable. And yeah. Definitely recommend if you're into romance. Uh, maybe pick this one up. <laughs> I still need to read moving pictures, so hopefully I can end the vlog by finishing that. I'm about 40% through on that one, so I don't know. I will probably do some more reading outside and I'll check in later.
Welcome to the end of this reading vlog. Uh, this is a few days later. I had a pretty busy weekend, but I did get some reading done at least. On Friday, there's this family I was cleaning their house for, so while I was doing that, I listened to my audiobook of the Claw of the Conciliator, which since I was there for like about six hours, I was able to finish the audiobook, which I was not expecting to get done. Um, but I did get that done, and then on Sunday I read the last bit of Moving Pictures, so. In total I wrapped up four books this week. Uh, most of them I, I had already started, so that I didn't read four total books, but I at least got four finished. So if I add up all the pages and estimate the pages that would have been with the audiobook, <laughs> over the seven days that I was reading I read and listened to about 970 pages, which is pretty crazy for me. But yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, one of those was a romance, so I kind of, those just fly by. I almost don't even ca count those as like all their pages, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, I really like the Book of the New Sun series so far. I will have to say that it is hard to follow sometimes. Like, it's really interesting and you like know what's going on while you're listening to it. But then <laughs> when it was over, I was like, wait a second, what, what exactly happened? I had to look up a summary just to like to put all the pieces together. That book is pretty detail oriented and it's like it in itself is like a puzzle so it's definitely a book that people could reread and pick up more things each time. I definitely recommend it but I probably would suggest having the book even if you listen to the audiobook because it is a good like performance but having the book I think it would be a little bit easier to like pick up on certain things. And then uh, moving pictures was fun. I kind of like near the end where you get to see some of like Hollywood's magic, movie magic that they use and it was kind of funny. I'm almost caught up to the Discord buddy read. I have one more book and then this month's book and then I'm all caught up. So yeah, that's all I have for you for now and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!